What's up, guys? West Coast Picks here, and today I reached out the bucket of locks I got from Pick Me 1977, and I pulled out Pert Near, pinned up by K1 Locks. And uh, we have a pretty sticky key here. It's a uh, pretty good bidding. Gotta like that. Is a slag type kick cylinder, and uh, we'll see. What K1 did to this lock. Let's see if we can get into it. Alright. Works good. Uh, choosing weapons. Go to the top of the keyway. And we will start with this guy. And I'll probably have to go with something deeper looking at that key. But we'll find out. Let's give this thing a shot, shall we? Bit out of six, but it felt like it wanted to keep going. I'll try some other stuff first here. Just to make sure. It's five. It's three. There's two. I can get him to go. Nope, and we're open. All right. So let's see what K1 Locks put in. Perp near. Uh, we already saw it working, so I don't need to lock it back up to do that. Let's. Uh, I might want to lock it back up just to gut it. I do have the key, so I'm going to do that. Just to make it easier on myself. All right. We are open. Shim in. Uh oh. I bet the crap out of this shim. I think it's in though. Sure was. All right. So we got all six pins in and working. All right. Where are my tweezers at? Uh, that's not good. I need them. Crap. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go find my tweezers, guys. No idea where I put them. They should be right here, but give me half a sec. Sorry about that, guys. They're in the other room for some reason. It's probably pinning up a lock or something. I got like six pairs of these things. I don't know why I can't find one when I need it. <laughs> shim out. Or bent shim. And let's see what he put in pert near. So far, I'm seeing spools. So I'll get these springs out as well. There's 
spool. And another spool. That's five and six. All right. We don't have any modifications to the Bible. And the plug has threading in one, three, four, and five, counter milling in two and six. This is what K1 locks put in pert near. Let's get a good look at this lock here. As you can see, uh, the key pins are upside down, but kind of just dumped them out that way. We have a serrated in one, standard in two, serrated in three, serrated in four, a spool in five, and a standard in six. And then the top, pretty much all spools. We have a, kind of a tapered spool in one, nice deep spool and sharp on two, short spool, kind of tapered on three, same as four, same as five, and then six looks like a factory spool. Uh, might not be factory, might be homemade, just very well done. And uh, looks like all steel springs with a couple long ones right at the top there. So that is what K1 locks put in pert near. And we can also see the threading and counter milling in the core there. So. That was pretty good, pretty good uh, lock, pretty fun to pick, had excellent feedback. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Anyway, um, if you watched my last video, you know I had the uh, locksmith bucket. <laughs> so I thought I'd go over a bit of what I got out of that bucket. Uh, first, the, the pins. This is a uh, standard mason's jar. As you can tell, it's, you know, three quarters full, uh, and it weighs a lot. <laughs> uh, to give you an idea how many pins this is, it's thousands, because, um, well, this is 75 pins. <laughs> so, uh, just to give you an idea of how many are actually here, there's probably, if I had to estimate, I'd probably say there's about 3,000 pins here. And I've cleaned them all up. Um, I've sorted all the, everything that's not a regular pin out of here so these are just um, drivers and key pins for regular pin tumbler locks and um, I'll have to uh, put them into my little organizer and sort them out as I need them I usually sort the drivers out from the key pins but it's about as far as I go um, as far as other stuff goes I got I sorted it all out here. So this is all multi-lock stuff, uh, inners and outers, and there are some drivers up in the uh, intersection here. So we got some spool drivers, uh, standard driver, more spool drivers. I do have a bunch of drivers around here for multi-lock. Uh, these will be. This is all from that bucket. These will be sorted out to the other uh, pinning kits I already have lying around. Uh, these are all tail pieces and uh, end like slag type rings and stuff like that. And uh, a sidebar in there. There's a medical sidebar in there. And uh, tail piece screws as well. And this is all miscellaneous hardware in this half. Uh, big chunk of brass or who knows what. This is just stuff I wanted to keep. This would be like a, a plug adapter. Some miscellaneous springs. A couple tail pieces. You know, stuff like that. Some uh, clips and things like that. These are all wafers. Uh, I never do wafer work, but uh, I keep them. This is my second bucket full of wafers right now. I have another one around here somewhere, right here. So, <laughs> now I've got two, two trays full of wafers. Uh, what else is there? There is... Uh, padlock pins and shims. So these are uh, American or master sized uh, padlock pins. Mostly um, key pins. There are not many drivers in there, but that's fine. A lot of serrateds and stuff. 
and shims that weren't too bad. I mean, these are only half the ones that were there. And there's probably about 20 of them here. But uh, the other half were too bad to keep. <laughs> um, we have medical pins. So on the bottom portion here is medical pins. This is a sidebar pin from something. I'm not too sure what it's from, but uh, it is definitely a sidebar pin. Um, what else we got? Uh, springs and miscellaneous. Uh, these would be security pins and ball bearings. So, springs up here. With the springs I was managed to salvage. And, you know, kind of like a T-pin. There's a serrated. There's a couple of spools. Another T-pin. Another T-pin. And some ball bearings in there. Uh, and Abloy stuff. So I got another bin somewhere around here full of Abloy stuff as well. So I'll have to add this to it. Here we go. Some more Abloy stuff there. So I'll add these to it. I'll probably have to start a new parts, uh, parts bin for Abloy stuff. Uh, we got some cylinders that were in the bucket. So there's a slag type, there's another one. This is a master uh, puck, puck lock style cylinder. Um, a slag cylinder missing the clip and another uh, slag cylinder. It's the E missing um, the tailpiece as well, but there are lots in that I got out of the bucket, so that should be fine. Um, and the rest is pretty much keys. So we got these three cool SMG Sergeant Greenleaf uh, like warded keys. Very, very cool. Lever lock style. Uh, got a ring full of blanks. So a bunch of blanks. Uh, there's a wiser. There's a bunch of slag. There's an LSDA. There's a... Uh, uh, Dominion Lock, another LSDA, this is uh, Ilco, that is uh, 1001 FH, it's a Corbin. Um, it's uh, another Dominion Lock, an M1, that's uh, a uh, 997B, it's a small Yale type. Yeah. And uh, 153.6R and 1071B. Oh, and a, a Rosslyn R1022L. So, cool. Bunch of blanks out of the deal, which is pretty cool. And this big honking thing full of pre-cuts. Uh, not sure if I'm going to be able to get them all in frame here. I'll give it a shot. Uh, we got here... Which you can't quite see the end of it, but it is uh, all wiser. These two bins are wiser. There's an abloy and a best. A uh, bunch of miscellaneous, um, smaller, like padlock style M1s and uh, or, or, um, wafer lock style keys. These are automotives. This is all uh, SC1 which is 5-pin slag. This is all SC4, which is 6-pin slag. These are all ASA twins. These are all Medico, uh, including one M3 in here. Super thick key. I like those. And um, these are all multi-lock. A couple of Corbins. Some Master... The uh, removable core type master. Yale in this bin. Sergeant in this bin. Quick set in this bin. And the last bin you can't see is American. So that's a ton of pre cuts as well. And that's pretty much what I got out of the bucket, guys. Um, it took way longer going over what I got out of the bucket than actually picking and cutting the lock. But people were curious as to what I got out of the bucket, and that's what it was. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to 
getting getting at all this stuff, especially these pins, because if you make challenge locks, you know that you go through pins like crazy. And when I make trades with people that are newer, they always want pins. So I try to send pins out with my trades sometimes, and it leaves me with less pins. So now I have a bunch of pins, miscellaneous pins. We're making challenge locks, so we trim them down and, you know, do funny things to them anyway. So just having a big bulk of surplus pins probably few thousand sitting there which is pretty cool anyway guys thanks a lot for watching thanks to pick me 1977 for sending me that awesome package full of locks thanks to k1 locks for pinning up that lock and sending it out to the community and thank you all for watching later guys